guys, welcome to Loudly Creative again. It's me, again. Sorry, if you were expecting someone else, I don't think anytime soon I will be able to change myself from who I am. Okay, no joke. Going straight to it and not trying to be humoristic or making a blooper reel, which is always present in my explanations of books. And to keep it short and concise, I'm sorry. Uh, today I will be reviewing a great read, an amazing writer, Nobel Prize winner of 2003. Can you guess? Yes. John Maxwell Coetzee. Um, the book I have in hand is called A Diary of a Bad Year. You have a bird there. I believe it might be a crow or of some sorts. It's in Spanish. The version I picked up was in Spanish. Uh, then again, it's the same content, just a different language. But for those who um, believe that the actual language of the writer will always pertain or sustain or have or involve more of a meaning because of its root language. He's got something to say about it in this book. Uh, I agree with that as well. Uh, but he says that the context of semantics within language, because this is a cathedratical book, and I'll get to that shortly, um, there is no language in understanding ideas if they are transmitted in the form of logic that is as clear and transparent uh, in its translation uh, when obtaining a result that implies uh, a linear path, at least, of the idea mentioned before. But yes, I do agree that their language might have an association to loss of communication within different uh, origins of our root to expose, expose verbally or written statements, but then again, that's rhetoric and that's something we can talk about later. Either or, this is J.M. Cutsey's uh, Diary of a Bad Year, Diario de un Mal Año in Spanish. It's also in Spanish. Just uh, all the other books I've uh, reviewed and will review, they're mostly in Spanish as well or in any other languages. Uh, I wouldn't want to give my aval on that 100% because there might be a case where it's not in a certain language, but this one is in Spanish. Either or, it's a beautiful book, and uh, in no sense the cover is my favorite. But either or, what's inside is what matters. And uh, it's a book that's divided in three parts. Two of those parts are intrinsically connected uh, with, e with each other. One of the parts is actually in past tense. The other one is in future tense. And... The core of the book, which is his opinions on the state, on uh, matters of, in governance, and uh, basic breaking down, you know, taking apart or deglossifying. Is that an optimal word? I'll just say that it is because it makes sense and it's in the matter of context that the worth of a meaning relies upon. He indulges in explain as a South African a writer the position of three of the greatest countries that came from a historical background that connected them one way or another uh, as colonies or separatist nations that unified their own democratic state in buildup after their independence from Great Britain. So basically, Great Britain here, and three ramifications, South Africa, and in no order of alphabetical intentions to, it's just celebrating the writer's origin, Australia, which he talks about with a lot of intent, and the United States. And he basically breaks down how the three nations have different perspectives in the democratic form they have uh, ultimately all achieved to develop as uh, developing nations, and developed uh, nations of the social strata. Uh, he says things about liberty. He talks about Machiavello and uh, his position on Tolstoy as well. Uh, by the way, I do have a review on one of Tolstoy's pieces, and probably if you are seeing this in the future, I might have more now. Either or, um, 
check the links on the channel and you might find interesting connections to these themes at hand. Um, he states that Australia is the most liberal of the three nations in their democratic stance and every chapter he touches the connection of their democratical uh, upbringing after their independence from the root nation of Great Britain he presents a very either taboo subject or uh, a theme that might be difficult to digest but well prepares you for a political or circumstantial notion uh, in his opinions of of what is our present situation uh, from a savvy perspective in his uh, edu ed education uh, form. Uh, for example, one of those taboo themes would be pedophilia, uh, the other one might be terrorism, and uh, so on. He even has uh, audacity to uh, question Hitler's uh, and other tyrants of our ages uh, point of view, and uh, he tightly grips this theme with moral and ethical perspective. And if quantities are, in a matter of fact, significant, themes that we all go through during our growing up uh, as society advances and as in a personal uh, sentiment, I would refer to the maybe cancers of society, those things that uh, unfortunately, generations from our past have left behind which we must deal with and try to improve just on the premise that sometimes we arrive to a place and there might be, hopefully not, uh, something to worry about and we must uh, find the best path to resolve for not only us, but those that may come later. Uh, the book is beautiful. Those other two stories that are on the side... Uh, are romantically engaged in the description of how he developed the main story of his opinions and uh, one is a love story about him and the woman he employs to help him finish the book and the other is a story of that woman and her husband-to-be. I will not give away what happens but I will just say that it's a very uncensored and uh, not extremely deep uh, theme to relate to all that political, cultural, and deep in social recognition of usually unmentioned themes that brings like a smoothie and in, with no intention of trying to make through this metaphor the drinking of the book, but it definitely was uh, a binding um, decision and a very bold one to make by this author, which eventually paid off because he had already received the Nobel Prize liter of Literature uh, in 2003. And I would assume that that gave him not only the confidence, but the great uh, opportunity to write about things that truly matter and we have as obstacles in life that also merge with the simplicities of love which sometimes we think are so big and problematic and problematic in in our not knowing what to do but really may mean less than what idealistically we should be worrying about either or it's a great book diary of a bad year by john maxwell coatsy south african writer Nobel Prize winner of uh, literature in 2003 and uh, I picked up this book because my father had it in his collections and I'm finishing my first novel soon shortly in Spanish first being it my mother tongue tongue oh also just going back really quickly amazing chapter on how we learn to count and it connects to literature uh, the assignation of a value by assigning a tone as we express it and who teaches us how to count and the aggregate purpose of it. It's beautiful, not in an imagery um, implied on our mind to sustain a thought, but on how he creatively puts it together. Great book, worthwhile reading, and like I said, 
I got it from my father who is a journalist and uh, he always inspired me to read without saying a word I would just watch him read and that was enough for me and it's something I'm grateful so that's how I got upon this book I had no clue how good of a writer Coetzee was this was loudly creative again I will be posting some other books that I've been thinking about reading and uh, will be sharing as soon as the possibility may present itself. Thank you for joining Loudly Creative on another of its ventures to involve you, the entertained mind on uh, the abstract putting together of words from my interpretation from a selfish point of view. And I truly aspire to inspire, if that makes any sense, a will to leave something behind with these words from what this man left through his, so that you may enjoy reading. Goodbye, and thank you.